Hey everybody, Ivan here. Today, we've got our 3D printed Draco build based on the Plastikov version 3. The parts kit that it came from is a Romanian PM90. That's the military name the Romanians have for what we in the US know as the Draco. It's a short 12-ish 12 12 inch barrel AK, and it's a lot of fun. There's a couple weird quirks, interesting handling characteristics of this thing, and I'd like to speak some about how it works as a 3D printed build. But first, we got, I don't know, 10-ish rounds loaded up in this magazine. Let's go ahead and smack a little bit of steel. There's several things that make the 3D printed Draco build interesting. First off, and I guess this is something that's true of all Dracos, is the fact that you can kind of tell that the shooter wasn't really meant to hit anything. It's a little bit different with this build because I'm able to attach a uh, stabilizing brace back here. My attachment method for it is a little screwy. I didn't want to buy the $20 aluminum tube because I didn't know if I'd actually like how this thing handles with a brace. So I ended up doing a 3D printed tube. The threads didn't want to hold. It came a whole fiasco, but it sort of held in there with a mixture of tape and this screw acting as a pin. That story aside, it does handle fantastically with a stabilizing brace, but you're constantly limited by what I think is probably the greatest, I guess we can call it a flaw, of the Draco's design, and that is its incredibly short sight radius. It's very easy to think you have the sights lined up, take your shot, and miss the target by two inches left, and you could have sworn your sight picture was dead on. This all owes to the fact that this sight radius is actually so short, some handguns, be it very long handguns, generally revolvers, have equally long sight radiuses. Only this is meant to be a carbine sort of thing, not necessarily a uh, pistol or revolver. So the sight radius does limit you in some regards. However, the sort of trade-off with that sight radius is this thing is extremely light and it handles very nicely. The gun itself being Weighing around five pounds, six pounds, which doesn't sound extremely light as far as light carbines, light rifles go, but in this compact package, especially for an AK, it's pretty great. All right, I'd like to talk a little bit about what the Plastikov version 3 exactly is, because I've seen a little bit of confusion out there, and I can't say I blame them with version 2 and 3 and revision 3 and 4 and 5, and people get lost very easily in the details. Plastikov version 3 is an improvement to Plastikov version 2, which of course was an improvement to version 1. The big changes, the things you need to know for the version 3, is in addition to being a 3D printable AKM receiver, it's compatible with RPK front assemblies, also AK100 front assemblies. The AK100 and RPK uh, kits are loosely based on the AKM. If you follow the AK family tree, they're all sort of connected back to the AKM. But there are, of course, differences in parts compatibility issues, which is the nature of the AK. It's, for, you know, for as many AKs as there are out there, it's probably the least standardized firearm. Even in this PM90 Draco setup, you know, the gas tube length isn't the same as other short AKs. It's not the short as a, it's not, not the same length as a standard AKM. It's a little bit of a hodgepodge of specs. Whenever you come to one gun to the next, it doesn't enjoy that same sort of familiarity and compatibility as the AR-15. Not that that's a bad thing, just the way it is. So the Plastikov version 3 has better documentation, a little bit improved fitment on the parts, tweaks the specs here and there, more optimization, you know, more optimize around the sort of specs that the Creality printers hold versus Prusas or things like that. Because at this point I've switched over to essentially just the Creality printers. They're easier to work with and when things break, you don't have to wait a long time for shipping from Czechoslovakia, the parts are a lot cheaper, and for several other reasons. Plus, the community sort of embraced the Creality printers, and I've recommended them for a long time and used them for a long time, but now it's pretty much exclusive. Anyway, a couple other notes about the Plastikov version 3. It adds some things like this cinch bolt, which essentially just goes straight through the receiver to add a little bit of extra tension to the front trunnion. I've put about three or 400 rounds through this kit by now, and there is no perceivable wiggle whenever you grab on your barrel assembly and twist between the receiver and the trunnion. Some of that's just due to the way that this, this gun goes together. Of course, the latest version of the Plastikov fits very well on the front trunnions, but that cinch bolt does seem to help, especially whenever the trunnion is hot, the gun itself is you know, even too hot to touch on the metal parts. This cinch bolt helps keep everything where it should be. Uh, the Plastikov version 3 also moves to only working with printed dust covers. You can get a steel dust cover still to fit, but it requires taking a die grinder or a Dremel tool or whatever to your steel dust cover. If you're okay with that, fine, but the printed dust covers work really well. I've tested them for, you know, this, this one's been on this gun for hundreds of rounds now. And you can see that sometimes cases do ding up the rear edge of the dust cover, but on a steel AK dust cover, cases do actually bounce off of it as well. 
So that's the thing, and it sometimes might look the eject ejection pattern look a little erratic, but that's just due to the nature of the fact that you know, the plastic dust cover is much more springy than the steel one. Not an issue, just an observation. Finally, the magazine compatibility, all these sorts of things are you know, standard like AK. You can see I've got an ALG trigger. Internally, it can take all of the fun bits and goodies as you're, you're used to in being able to customize AKs. And it, I suppose nerdy details for anybody who cares. This is a, uh, I think it's a, a JTAC comp. You can see the, the ports on it are J-shaped, which I thought were kind of cool. It was advertised as helping keep the muzzle down. It definitely does that compared to not having a muzzle device on it. But it was also advertised as reducing the concussive blast compared to other muzzle brakes. I don't know about that. Personally, I think that it's you know, significantly more concussive than obviously just the bare muzzle. But even just versus like a slant brake or something, this is a very, you know, it, it, it's not quite as like, oh, it's less muzzle blast than even the standard thing, or less muzzle blast than a flash hider, and it's not quite true. But it does keep the muzzle down really well, and I think it looks really good on there, so I think it's there to stay. All right, we got a 20 rounds loaded back up. Here at 25 yards, I'll run the steel back and forth. So, that was pretty good. <laughs> Got our steel swinging back and forth there. This thing is a lot of fun. It certainly does have a sharper impact that you feel in your shoulder in terms of felt recoil when the bolt comes back. That's almost entirely due to the fact that this thing is much lighter than a standard AK, so it kicks you that much harder. But, all things considered, it's very controllable. The muzzle rise is, is more than a normal AK, probably just due to the result of the fact that it is, again, much lighter. But certainly controllable, able to get fairly quick follow-up shots, at least here at 25 yards. Let's see what happens when we go back to 100. All right, we're back at 100 yards with our 3D printed Draco build. Now, this is the part where I get my excuses out of the way. We prefer round stop at the end of the range. So, with all of my excuses and complaining out of the way, let's see what I can actually do with this thing. like I'm hitting it there. So I, I was hitting the, the big steel target at first and then I moved the one to its right, hit it a couple of times. It's pretty close to dead on, but again, we're running into that short sight radius. Your sight picture can look perfect and you pull the trigger, even if you really concentrate and control your flinch, slight misalignment in a sight picture this narrow is a big distance off target. There we have it. There's 20 rounds down range. I'd say that's pretty reasonable accuracy. I'm, I'm rather proud of the little Draco that it can do 100 yards reasonably well. I wasn't sure what the zero would be, and it's it's pretty close to dead on. It's probably hitting about again you know, four to eight inches high here, so the same as at 25. So the difference in being too high at 25 ends up being taken out by drop over 100 yards, which is a pretty cool thing. So there we have it. A 3D printed Draco build, that's a whole lot of fun to shoot. It's lightweight, reasonably accurate, as accurate as it can be with the not so great sight picture and short sight radius. And it just spits 760 by 39 downrange. Just today making this video, I probably did another 200-ish rounds, but bringing this gun to nearly 500 by now, if it's somewhere between 4 and 500. And I've yet to have a single issue, failure to extract, eject, otherwise, even feed. It's had no problem with the magazines I've even been using with it. So I've got to say I'm, I'm blown away by how great this little Draco run. Part of that is because the uh, monkey who populated this barrel was me. And uh, while I've done it before, sort of helping a friend, I've never done the entire thing, step A to step B to step C, all the way down the road myself. So pretty cool that it came together so well, and the thing just runs great. 
anyway, as far as closing thoughts go, I like this gun enough that I definitely want to put a little bit more money into it to make it a little bit more shootable. Other than that, not a lot of thoughts. At some point, I'll probably move over to an actual aluminum KAK uh, pistol brace tube here instead of this crummy plastic one. But at least for now, through these 500-ish rounds, this plastic one's actually held up pretty well. Although you can see, at least indicated by this tape bunching up here, probably the, the mount, that this, the, the, the set screw in this brace that holds it onto the plastic tube, I bet you the plastic tube underneath there is pretty chewed up based on the fact that it looks like the blade's been sliding a little bit forwards, but that's okay. I, 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 I commend this plastic tube on its lifespan thus far. Well, guys, I'm not sure there's much else to say besides that out here at the range. I suppose we can take it back home, do a little once-over of the internals. I can tell you just looking at it now and knowing how it shoots, this thing's fine internally. But we can do a once-over just to sort of show you guys how things are looking under the hood. And then we'll wrap things up. So, our day at the range is over, but you can see a couple of things have changed here on our Draco. So I mentioned wanting to make some changes to improve the shootability of it and complaining about the iron sights a lot. So, of course, the solution there, it would seem, would be just get an Ultimac rail and throw a red dot on it. So that's what I did. I had to route out a little bit of material from the handguard to get the Ultimac to fit on. But the rail went on fairly easily. Then I went to put a red dot on, of course, without this obnoxious riser. The problem is, whenever you're uh, bracing with your pistol brace, the way the sights just sort of naturally line up, it puts the red dot right in the middle you know, so so the, the, the red dot's shining on the hooded part of the front sight. Obviously not a real problem with uh, standard AKs, but because this has a hooded front sight, it was very annoying. And so you ended up having to push your face you know, way lower than you'd like to, or you have to pick it up extra high to get the dot you know, above the uh, hooded front sight there. So it was not really a very great setup. So what I opted to do was throw a riser on there. And then you have the added benefit of the iron sights do actually line up underneath the riser. So you can still use the iron sights, if you're so inclined, or sort of just go for a chin weld and run the optic on the riser here. Not the perfect setup, but it does work pretty well, and it is comfortable. Anyway, besides those changes, not much as, uh, I haven't really done much else with the gun. Probably put at least another 100 rounds on it since the last shots you saw there on the video. It's held up great, still no more issues, but... As I promised, we can take a deeper dive into the internals of the gun here by popping our top cover off. You can see I do have one of these crappy recoil buffers, but that's because the set of rails that I'm using here have been milled for quick takedown of the bolt carrier. It's a little tight still, but we can pop our bolt carrier out sort of like a traditional AK. The pur purpose of this buffer is much like on the uh, modern day Galils, the Galil Aces. It keeps the carrier from coming so far back that it even has a chance of popping out uh, you know, in the disassembly notches back here. Not a problem with normal AKs, of course, but having this done like this prevents any sort of weird issue happening. On earlier versions of the Plastikov, if you didn't have one of these buffers and you did add these notches, the bolt carrier would try and hop the rails back here and then it would always lock in the rearmost position and you'd have to give it a tap down to get the bolt to go back home. So, the buffer prevents that from being an issue, and the gun just runs smooth as silk. You can see, not a whole lot to report here. You might be able to see some of the, the filth that's built up on the inside there. It does seem that this thing may be running a little bit dirtier than a normal AK, although that may just be a factor of a shorter gas system overall here. And the bolt, of course, potentially opening a little bit sooner than on a standard AK. And of course, the gas port diameter here is much bigger because for dwell distance, you've got an inch, whereas on a normal AK, you've got six plus inches. But otherwise, all things are fairly normal here. You can see I've still got the upper hand guard that I popped off to put the Ultimac rail on. For those of you who are worried, like, oh, you butchered a military kit, I mean, I routed out the hand guard, which is effectively an inconsequential thing. The routing on these handguards, I've seen on the insides of three of them now, and the factory routing on the inside of these handguards wasn't terribly consistent. So that's not a huge issue. Uh, I guess probably I should point out the fact that there is a uh, very visible gap. Ordinarily, Ultimax sort of like sit inside the rear sight housing, so you don't have that gap there. I believe that's present because the PM90s 
versus uh, the Dracos have slightly different lengths in their barrels. This is also sort of obvious because you can see the gap there between the trunnion and the uh, sight housing here. This barrel, it seems, as far as I can, as far as I can reckon, is about a third of an inch longer than it needs to be. And that third of an inch is, you know, if the gas port was a third of an inch further back, everything would line up okay. Or if the whole barrel itself, so your know, muzzle threads were cut off a third of an inch and then threaded back a third of an inch, we would have been able to make this like, look normal. So there's a little bit of weirdness there. However, a third of an inch is so extreme that if I do ever decide to change things up here, I can get the barrel cut down, re-threaded, a third of an inch is far enough back I could just drill a whole new gas port and this sight block would actually seal off the old gas port or I could weld it up either way. And all of the pins would move so far back, you could just do this and it would look normal and correct if I ever decide to sort of switch it up. But that would involve getting this barrel turned down and while it would be great to have a lathe, I don't actually have one yet. So that sort of leaves us where we are now. That sort of discussion aside, I, I have seen a lot of people ask uh, where it is that you get Draco kits. Uh, unfortunately, unless you get lucky, you can't really just like find a you know pre-pressed, pre-assembled you know, front end. So I bought this as, like I'd said, uh, a, a Romanian PM90 parts kit. So you get it like a normal AK parts kit, buy a barrel separate, and then all of the barrel population is on you. It's not the most difficult thing, but it's certainly more difficult than something like a, a Setme or an MP5 barrel pressing in population just due to the fact that there's you have to get all of the parts aligned and then make sure all your pins pinholes are drilled straight. So it's not the easiest thing, but if you've got a press and either a very sturdy drill press and or a mill, it's, it's not certainly not impossible. Beyond that, I'm not sure what else to say. I've got the ALG trigger in here. But other than that, it's a you know, fairly standard AK thing, not a, not a lot to talk about. I guess I could mention you know, the Plastikov version 3, the only real difference in rail spec is right up here. Not sure how you know, the camera can sort of see it. This rail's cut back about an inch and a quarter on this side. That's something that some AKMs have done, and all I believe every AK100 I've seen has done. I believe the reason that's done is because when AKs have sort of worn out extractors and extractor springs, or if you're an AK100 because they have you know, extractors that are internal to the bolt. I should have grabbed my AK-100 to show you, but, or rather external. So you see this, this extractor is like internal to the bolt face. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't stick out on the outside of the bolt. It's internal. AK-100s have a uh, external extractors. So the extractor groove is cut all the way to the outside of the bolt. And for whatever reason, at least with my sample size of one running them on a Plastikov, it actually lowers the angle that the tip of the cartridge ejects at. So instead of ejecting like this and sort of clearing the top of this rail, it ejects lower and would commonly clip that top of that rail. So having that rail cut back ensures that cartridges can swing free and clear out of the gun. Sort of a minor thing, not something that I sort of thought about, but you can see some AKMs have this cut, some don't, and I think it's generally just a reliability thing. The gun still runs fine with the cut, but of course it's added work that may or may not be necessary. In general, not a bad thing to have. And this rail spec is, of course, totally backwards compatible to your previous version Plastikovs. If you've already bought a Plastikov set of rails, you can make this cut yourself with the Dremel tool. I've done it on several sets of rails already. You're really just cutting far enough back that you know, the rear end of the notches on the bolt carrier that ride in the rails will still have some purchase on that rail when the bolt's all the way forward. So you know, it's, it's not, not too complex a cut. And of course, you can compare the CAD files for the Plastikov version 3 rails to Mark it out, measure it out, if you're a person who measures stuff. But, that's pretty much all we got. Go ahead and throw this thing back together. The way I've sort of uh, hogged out these rails for quick disassembly, sometimes be difficult to get the bolt to go in, but there we go. Got it on our first try. This has been our Plastikov version 3 uh, Draco build, Day at the Range. Not the easiest build, I would say. Certainly harder than an AR-15 build, but man, it sure is a lot of fun. There's really no replacement for that AK action, and in a short, compact package, it's a whole lot of fun. If you've enjoyed this sort of video, I'm entertaining the idea of doing sort of more Days at the Range with my other builds. Of course, I've got plenty that I could do. But if you guys are interested in seeing a particular day at the range video, of course, you know, leave a suggestion in the comments. I'm sure you guys are more or less familiar by now, scrolling through my channel. 
what sort of uh, you know, guns builds I actually have. If you're interested in sort of supporting this work and uh, buying me ammo, because Lord knows it's expensive, I've actually set up a, a Utreon account. Uh, it's over on Utreon, of course, same, same channel name, Ivan Prince Guns. On Utreon, I'm able to share a lot more of the stuff that sort of YouTube won't let me show. I'm planning on doing you know more comprehensive build videos where it's not necessarily a tutorial, but more of a, just like a build and chat along. Discuss you know what it is that's on my mind for that particular day. Potentially even start doing live streams showing builds would be fun. We could do a, a build along session or something like that. So if you're interested, go ahead and subscribe over on Utreon. Utreon sort of combines the video functions of YouTube along with the subscription functions of uh, Patreon. I know some of the guys over at Utreon. They're good folks. They're not discriminatory towards the gun crowd like both Patreon and YouTube are. So go ahead and check me out over there if you're interested in seeing more, perhaps by, behind the scenes. And uh, subscribers over there, whenever they have video suggestions, this was sort of one of the ideas that they had pitched to me. I thought it was a good idea. So if you've got some uh, ideas for videos over there, I'm more than welcome to hear them. Okay, you guys take it easy.